In this video, I want to talk all about front side grind, so the slash grind and the stand up grind. I think if you're a heavier person, you're taller, you're bigger like me, and you're trying to learn skateboarding, I think the slash grind is going to be a big advantage. But if you're lighter, you're smaller, I think stand up grind is going to be a big advantage. I actually learned stand up grinds first when I was younger. We're going to dive into all of it here at Bishop Skate Park, and then we're going to go dive into another skate park where they have pull coping, a bigger transition. So we're just going to be covering everything, kind of like a master class on the front side 5 0. So let's jump into a session here at Bishop and then and we'll talk about some techniques that I haven't seen really on YouTube that you can definitely take away to your front side 5 There's actually quite a few techniques that I haven't seen on YouTube. I've been watching some front side 5 videos earlier. I was like, wait a second, there's some things I can provide value for, so stick around. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to get comfortable with before you're actually trying front side grind stand up or slash is just front side kick churn. And the one thing I would say with this is it's a lot in your heel. A lot of people forget about that. So you really wanna have your back foot in that heel position where a lot of your weight is in that back heel. And then the other thing that I say with this that really helps is dropping that left shoulder down. So you wanna drop it down. The reason you wanna drop your left shoulder down is so that you can see what you're doing. So when you're kick churning front side, those are the two things I would look out for. There's a third one I'll say in a second. So basically you have your heel right here and you're turning front side. We won't go too much into the front side kick turn since that's not what this video is about. But I think there is an important lesson here is dropping that front side shoulder. And at the same time, you're kind of looking at your back foot always when you're doing it. So as much as you're dropping that shoulder, you kind of have your head down looking at your back foot as you're dropping the shoulder. And you're always trying to keep your head directly above the center of your board. I think that's really important when you're doing front side kick turns. I see a lot of people kind of putting their arms out and they get their back out and they start doing this banana technique and that's when you're just bound to zing out and fall off your board so you really want to keep that like equal sort of distribution with your head over your board as you're turning so even when you're turning those shoulders your head is kind of leading the way and then the other thing I'll say, I'm always, this is like a natural thing that I kind of noticed later on is I'm always pointing where I'm going. So even front side, I'm kind of like using my arm to point and using my head sort of in line with that arm and I'm pointing where I'm going. Now that's just a quick little overview of what I think can be really helpful when you're doing front side kick turns. So just getting really comfortable with those, going up higher, getting power sides even on them, like power sliding both ways. I made a whole video about how to power slide. I'll leave a link up above if you want to get more control of your kick turns essentially. So that's the first thing is just having control of that body distribution wave going front side. Once you're pretty comfortable with those front side kick turns and you feel like you're getting towards that lip, then you need to decide whether or not you want to try a slash grind or a stand up grind because I think they're approach is entirely different. So first we'll go into the slash grind because that's most common that people learn first the slash grind. But like I said, I learned stand up grinds before slash grind. So whichever one you learn first is really up to you, whatever you feel most natural with. So first we'll get into slash grinds. I think the really important thing with this is try to find a ramp that's not intimidating. Find some coping that's a little more set in the typical coping. Typical coping is out kind of a little chunkier. This coping right here is actually set in really nice. And the reasoning for that is you're not as intimidated to get your wheels over the coping and on to it and then riding off of it. It's less hang up factors, less technicality involved in something that has a little less hang up. So you get used to that motion of just kick turning and getting on to some coping and turning off. This is an example of a really good area to learn a front side slash grind. It's a little bit of a corner or it is a corner, full pocket versus a flat wall. You can learn on a flat wall, but I'll, I'll explain why a corner pocket is a good advantage for learning front side grinds in a second because it's kind of the motion of your body. But that's what I, this is the coping I really wanted to show you is that it's really flat I mean it's really not in there this is actually gonna be harder to front side grind once you figure out all your techniques but this is gonna be less intimidating at first the one thing you want to think about when you're doing front side grind whether stand up or front 5-0 is you want to hit it at an angle I see a lot of people going straight up and they're trying to like slash it but that's a disaster for uh, disaster that's a recipe for disaster or for just hang up something like that so my point is that you really want to again draw out that angle like imagine you have like like a, a white line and you're putting it on wherever it is whether it be a corner or a flat wall essentially what I'm trying to say is like you really want to ride up sideways you don't want to go too straight up because if you go up sideways you're eventually just lining 
up your truck up with the side of that coping. We'll get into the techniques of like getting up onto it or just slash grinding, but the point is you just want to ride sideways into the coping. And when you're not used to this and you're scared of it, the idea here too is when you're riding up sideways, you can kind of like touch your board and kick it out. You don't really want to get to that point, or you can. This is what people do kind of commonly is the kick turn, the kick turn, and then they get to that point where they're like, oh, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. You're almost better off going all the way up for it, grinding and learning how to bail, like get your truck on there and kick out and slide onto your butt is a good technique when you're trying to fall and learn slash grinds. Like I was saying, I think this is gonna be a good spot because your arms and the way that your arms are. So you're kind of doing this with your arms throughout your whole kick turn. You have your front arm in front of you, you're pointing, you're dropping that shoulder, and then your back arm is kind of following it through. That's essentially what you're doing, kind of making a swinging motion. So I think a corner is really gonna to work to your advantage because the idea is you kind of distribute your weight into the corner versus off the ramp. So here you can kind of push into the grind and you can put all your weight into here. And it's gonna be a big advantage is figuring out that technique of getting off the coping. Cause I think that's what really scares people is once they get on there, how do I get off? For a slash grind like this in a corner, I think it's gonna be a big advantage. Cause it's very consistent. And that's like the point that I'm trying to get out here is when you have a straight wall and you have to come straight down, it's just scarier. I think it's really the same thing as a corner. It's just scarier. So finding a corner pocket is gonna be a big advantage to getting up there. The other thing I'll say with this is just remembering you wanna stay on your heel when you get on here. You don't need to try to push it up, get on top of it. You really do want to sit in that back seat. You're, you're, you're in the back and I know it's like really against human nature. It might feel really weird at first, but I think that's where you're going to have to figure out your body weight and your special uh, meter essentially is figuring out how to get on to that truck from the transition. So a lot of that is just kind of getting in that back seat, willing to kind of sling back. And remember, like I said before, you could kind of slide onto your butt. So it's really not that bad of a technique to just figure out how to slide onto your butt, A, fall, and just to kind of ride like your feet back here. You want your front foot around here. The idea is you're distributing all of your weight onto that heel and then into your butt, and then even dragging your heel. I'll get more into that at one point or another once you're standing up. But that's how you get onto the coping. Now the main difference between a corner and a flat wall is that you're not using that weight distribution like you are in the corner. In the corner, you're able to kind of stay light in the beginning and then set all your weight into it. So you're sort of able to compact into the wall, which is a good advantage. The difference with the flat wall is that you do have to be more balanced. So you have to be more on top of your board. Again, it's about having your head always right on top. But really, it's kick journey. Once you get onto here, it's all just about riding it out. It's gonna feel really weird. It's gonna feel awkward at first, but the one thing I would say is just remember to have your back back foot on those hills your front foot's pretty evenly distributed across and you want to stay sideways I think a lot of people think that they have to go up grind and then like turn right down really what you're doing is the whole time you're kind of just edging the very side of it and you're continuing so you're not really like it's not really a motion of going up locking in and locking out that's the stand-up grind which we'll get into in a second but really this one is just about riding sideways enough and you're just hitting that lip right at the very top so a lot of this is going to be trial and error too just figuring out where exactly the lip is on the transition that you're skating now for the stand-up front side grind you do want to find a nice long wall i think that is going to be the one advantage I learned this at Ocean Beach Skate Park. So there's long mellow walls everywhere. I think something like this size is perfect. Like three feet, four feet is good. When it gets really small, it's harder to stand up grind because there's less room for everything that needs to go on. So I think like three feet and up is probably the easiest thing to learn stand up grinds on. Anything smaller than that, it's actually gonna be harder. The one technique I'll say before we get into like the whole process of it all that I learned when I was younger that I don't hear too much on YouTube is about dragging your back heel. So I'll show you some slow-mo clips, but essentially, I have my heel off the back of my board a little bit like that and it's giving me a little bit extra leverage on the 5-0 to balance it it's gonna be big for like getting off of the front side stand-up grind too now over time you figure out how to like kind of get your heel back and you don't have to drag your heel but the technique that I'm getting at is so that you can just get your confidence with the stand-up grind and then you can figure out how to like do it all stylish which we'll get into in a little bit but I think dragging your heel is a big one also it's a lot about your chest the so front side slash grind it's a lot about that body distribution and kind of pendulum and swinging with the stand-up grind I will say it's a lot about having your chest up on top and you're kind of doing a squat and you're like pushing that back leg that's how I call constantly feel like I'm pushing the leg that's 5-0 grinding and I'm just keeping that front one bent and I kind of just stay in this like squatting position like this almost in a way 
and that's like really what it is about it's like and it sounds silly but it's really about holding that position and then you can 5-0 forever as long as you want just holding dragging that hill holding down that squat position squatting back leaning your hip back down sideways keeping that foot right in the center that's a big difference too is with the stand up front side grind you want your foot distributed over your back truck pretty center unlike the slash grind where it's kind of over the back edge like this for example i think with the stand up you kind of want it over the center you want enough on the edge so you can drag it but the point being you're not all the way on the edge like you would with a slash grind where you kind of want to lift up and that's a good point it's like you're lifting up a lot for a slash grind and then you're turning with a 5-0 stand up grind you don't want to lift up too much you kind of actually want to just get right into there and then once you're in there then you can kind of lift up and lock it into position we're going to go over to mlk park and uh, i'll explain a little more about the front side stand up grinds as well as how the grind I know I've been spending a lot of time focusing on the obstacles that we're skating, but I think it's really important to consider when you're trying to learn new tricks. We're now here at MLK Skate Park. It's really close by. It's only like a mile away. And we're going to talk more about the stand-up frontside 5-0, as well as grinding on pole coping, something that's just really intimidating, but there are hacks. I think this wall is a really good wall for learning front side stand up grinds. It's perfect because you're not hitting it straight on. There's really no way to hit it straight on unless you did like a rock fake on this wall over here. The point being you always want to hit at a really steep angle with the stand up grind. I think that's the first important thing when you're learning this. It's not straight up and down. You're going so much at angle. So not only is this quarter pipe already at an angle, but I'm going to be coming down like this and it's going to work in my favor because I can go straight into the ramp versus learning how to turn into it. So that's going to be a big advantage. Out of here. Something I forgot to mention is launching out of the transition and just landing on the deck on flat. So you're just doing fly outs. It's really helpful for stand up 5 0s. That's something that I did a lot when I was trying to learn this trick when I was really young. And then eventually you can land to the side, sort of land to the left, almost like 180 or 90 out of it onto the deck. It's going to be really helpful for getting your confidence for doing the stand up front side 5 0. Now, I think one of the most important things that you can learn or try to do with this trick is grind on this part of your truck. So you want to be on that edge of your back truck. You don't want to be in the middle grinding. You don't want to be right on top grinding like that. You want to be grinding right on that bottom edge. Also, when I was talking about the hill earlier, that's kind of how you can help it. It helps balance that out and you're just grinding along kind of like that metaphorically speaking you're not really pinched like that but that's the idea because it's going to really help you not hang up when you're coming in not locked up essentially you can just dig into that back area of your truck back here and use your tail the edge of your tail is kind of rolling along the coping as well so it's helping lock it in it's really about getting that back truck in there right in that back area right there having your board sort of hanging over the edge your tails scraping the edge and then your heel it's holding along it that's the idea so next thing i kind of want to dive into is like where your body is and your weight distribution this will help with slappy grinds and uh, front side slash grinds as well if you don't know how to do those so the main difference in my feeding positions from stand up 5-0 and slappy are pretty different mainly because of that lock spot that you have with the stand up grind i think the main difference is you're coming out at a way different approach you want your chest out above your board and you're not just inside of the transition that's the big difference so what you can really figure out is just learning how to get on top of that 5-0 hold it and then bail just figuring out that lock spot like i was talking about before and just belling to your butt that's a really important part of learning this trick because once you learn that lock spot and you start belling you will master the stand up 5-0 now finding that lock spot and figuring all that other stuff out is really going to help you not locking up because the big advantage with this is that you're basically just going forward from here and riding into the transition like you can even put your hands on there and do that the, the where you go wrong or where you end up hanging up a lot of times when you go sharp and you're turning so sharp that eventually you do that and then your board laps over hangs up or just goes like that or, or goes to disaster that's a very common theme if you're going to disaster very often chances are you're not going enough angle at the ramp so it's not about just turning really sharp you want to go make sure you're going really angled at that ramp so once you got that lock spot you kind of figured out how to bail those five those from here it's really about shifting your hips into the transition just like a slap or just like the slash grind and riding out forward and not turning too sharp you want to keep going with the transition i think it's really important to draw out your front side grind so like whenever i'm looking at something i'm kind of thinking like 
here's where I'm gonna go in, here's where I'm gonna grind, here's where I'm gonna come out. It doesn't always work that way, it doesn't work in my favor, but I think that's a good thing to kind of like visualize before you go up to it. So you know, and when you're looking at your feet the entire time, which is important when you're doing a 5 0, make sure you're looking at your feet, you're not concentrating on anything else, and then you can just see as you fall in. The other important thing that I think you gotta think about when you're doing stand up front side 5 0s is you wanna have enough speed. Speed is crucial for coming in, is what I mean, not just for grinding, but coming in. It doesn't matter how much speed you have going in, as long as you have enough to grind but you want to have enough speed to come out you don't want to be going too slow so if you get too slow and you come in that's also another recipe for hanging up so you want to have enough speed so that you can push forward again it's kind of like coming off a curb in a way like you're just shifting from those hills down to your toes and you're going forward that's the main thing too hills to toes going forward but not churning too sharp you want to go forward and keep your motion going forward with enough speed because if you don't have enough speed it's definitely another way to hang up. It happens to me. But the other thing you can really try to do if you can't get enough speed and you're kind of scared of that is just to do short ones and come in quick. Because pivot stalls, like just front side pivot stalls, are actually a lot harder than front side slash grinds or front side stand up grinds. Now, with the stand up 5 0, you're still in the inside. You're not necessarily on the deck. I think that's something that people kind of misinterpret when they see it. You're actually not on the deck. It doesn't feel like it. It feels much more like you're just in the back seat and you're kind of riding sideways with the transition. That's where you want your hip to basically be aligned with the coping almost in a way and then you're doing a little bit of a banana with your back you're not getting all the way on the deck because I think that's when manuals or other things happen so you want to be on the inside make sure you have that lock spot and you want to be in the back and you can get into that lock spot really early if you're not feeling it you probably need to go more at an angle something else you can do when you're learning the stand up front side five those is actually kind of do a layback grind. I've learned those accidentally when trying to learn stand up front side five though. So all you do is like bend your knees even more and kind of put your back hand down to fall down on it essentially. So that's another way to bail the trick as you're learning it, but you never know. You might be able to use that later and actually learn layback grinds. Another hack to front side grinds. If you're scared of hanging up and you're kind of scared of like that motion of just committing and turning in sideways, like all the tips I have given you still don't give you enough courage. You can try to do them off a hip. This is a really big hip. I was doing some stand up and slash grinds off it. There's another one, a smaller one at Bishop that I was using. And if it's a small enough transition, it might actually allow you to get comfortable with just that motion of going forward. So you can really realize that it's not this big sharp turn that it looks like. And it's more of this gradual up, hit the lip and gradual down. The obvious exception is this obstacle. You're not gradually going down, you're just going straight off the end. So you don't really have to figure out how to go in is what I'm getting at. You can kind of just like, fly off the end you can use that to your advantage this obstacle reminded me is like sometimes when you're doing a slash grind it's almost like an ollie with your front foot you're just guiding it and you're almost curling your front foot over a little bit just to control that front board and your back foot is just staying right in the back you're just not alling but it's almost a similar motion to an ollie in a way you're just hitting that and your front foot is kind of like controlling your motion i guess that's what i'm getting at is like i think the front foot has a lot to do with the slash grind oh sorry man one thing I didn't really get into yet is front side stand up grinds through corners. We talked about slash grinds through corners and it works pretty much the same way. I would say it's actually easier again in the corner because you can utilize it. You can draw out where you're coming in, where you're coming out and it kind of works to your advantage because you don't have to turn so much in. That's the whole point with the corners. Like you actually don't get hung up as much. You can just go forward. So that's like a big thing that works to your advantage with any kind of corner, whether it be uh, a slash grind or a stand up front side 5-0. I think corners are a good way to learn stand up grinds and slash grinds. It just takes a little bit of trial and error. The hips are definitely a good hack to getting front side grinds as well. All right, I think that's all I can think about right now for front side grinds, slash grinds, stand up grinds. Hopefully some of these tips have been helpful for you. I'm going to get into the questions that you guys asked me on the YouTube channel, on the Instagram, just to hopefully I can find some other things that I didn't think about. I'm sure like I'll end this video, I'll be editing this video, which happens all the time. I think of more ways to help, but that's just how it goes. I can't, I can't include it all, even though I'm trying to. Now, unfortunately, my phone Wi-Fi stopped working and I couldn't get to all your questions. So I'm back the next day to get to the questions about front side 5 I screenshot everything so I wouldn't have to depend on the internet. So let's get into some of your questions that you asked me on Instagram and on YouTube community page about front side grinds. And the idea here is to not be redundant. I'm trying not to cover things that I've already covered, but maybe answer some questions for things that I didn't already think about. So the first one, which I think is really good, as 
someone who isn't much of a transition skater, it's hard to commit to slashing any tips. I think the one tip with that is just getting used to that front side kick turn. I know that's probably redundant and you probably know that, but just getting used to that front side kick turn, getting used to it, and then eventually just getting comfortable with belling. So it's going up and scratching and getting comfortable with belling. Big difference with transition skating and um, street skating in general is it's less linear. You're not going straight at obstacle alling onto it or anything like that. So I think you just have to get used to that fluid motion of pumping and absorbing some of that transition and just getting used to skating and pumping transition in general. I made tons of videos about the basics and I think that's a good thing to kind of get used to. Just getting used to your shoulders going up and down. It's just a lot different. So just getting that motion of front side kick turns over time eventually is going to get you comfortable with doing it. You can even skate like a bank. I think banks are a good way to kind of transition from straight street to transition skating, just getting used to that. Someone said, how to re-enter the transition without hookup? I can frontside smith, no worries, but 5.0 freaked me out. It's pretty funny because if you frontside smith, right at the very end of a frontside smith, you kind of have to lift up to get back in the transition. And if you know how to do frontside smith, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's that little sweet pocket spot in your tail that you kind of lift up and fall into the transition. And I would say that's the big key thing to not hanging up on frontside 5.0 is just figuring that out. You kind of almost pop off like a curb, but you're not really bonking off it it's more of a turn and you're falling into the transition but more of a forward turn like i've been saying before so you don't want to turn too sharp that's a recipe for disaster it's more about pushing yourself out and having enough speed so they can push yourself out sideways with the ramp and not straight down i think a lot of times what happens is you lose speed that or you put all your weight into it and then all your weight is on top which is hanging up you want to make sure to keep that weight in the inside count it if the tail scrapes doesn't bother me i actually kind of intend to scrape my tail out of it a little bit it's almost like a safety check so whenever i'm doing stand up 5.0 i'm definitely sort of like scraping out of it another thing that my buddy anthony brought up is like another hack or sort of like go to when you're doing 5.0s and you're scared of hanging up is just go into tail so you're stand up 5.0 and then just turn it into tail and then drop in because if you know how to drop in you can basically do this trick and that's what it's going to take it's some figuring out but you could do stand up and then just turn it into tail when in doubt when you're scared of hanging up or anything like that and then just drop in you'll get used to that motion slashes what are a good way to fall so like i said before it's falling onto your butt kind of wiping out wipe out or if you're going to fall forward try to go to your hip and your shoulder so you're not just going face forward i think slashes are one of those weird things where once you start doing it you're going to figure out how to fall you're going to naturally reflex and if you do something that's bad try to learn from that that's skateboarding in general how far in the back seat should we be on the grind now that's a really good question because i think with this trick in specific it's actually the furthest back you're ever going to be on your skateboard when you're doing your trick so you really do want to lean back it's quite the opposite if you know how to do a backside 5-0 you're really over it like a hawk unless you're hovering over it now with the front side 5-0 you really do need to kind of trust and be in the back and you figure out where that too far of a back seat is as soon as you get too far back there but i think being too far in the back seat is almost a hard thing to do with this trick you almost kind of need to test that sweet spot out and feeling how far your back you can be while still leaning forward so your front your front hip and your front area of your body is leaning forward but you're kind of in the back of the board so it's kind of a counterbalancing effect essentially so you want to be leaning back but your hips and everything else is almost leaning forward so you're balancing the board out that's really what it's all about but being in the back seat is crucial for this trip so i'd say do more backseat riding with the 5.0 and just figure out where that sweet spot is. Because I think you can be in the backseat for most of the grind. The shift happens when you're going in. So you need to be rolling over your board more and shifting your body over. So you can be back 5.0, leaning back. But as soon as you want to go in, you kind of have to curl your body and get over it to push it out, essentially. Because if you're too far back, you're just going to kind of manual down the transition, essentially. Do the grooves really help on your trucks? How long does it take to get them? I think the grooves help a lot. I got some new trucks, aces. I'll be uh, making a video about these. Whether or not I posted it already, uh we'll see but yeah i think the grooves help a lot because that that groove is kind of where you end up finding your natural spot that works best for you and that's something that just happens over time getting a pair of trucks and just committing to grinding every time you go out is how you're going to get your good groove you got to get these questions going because they're about to mow this lawn that i'm on <laughs> One thing that really helped my confidence with stand-up 5.0s and slashes is just learning how to fall. So for me, it was going straight to my butt, butt sliding out, or even running it out and kicking my board in front of me. That was a big thing is like making sure my board got away from me so I never land on it or anything like that. So I think learning how to fall is a big step into the mental process of breaking it down and feeling more confident with the trick.
There's uh, quite a few more questions, but I'm gonna leave those for next time. We got more videos, how to skate transition coming up. I have a little playlist over here. You can check out more transition tutorials. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already. Consider hitting that like button underneath, the little thumbs up if uh, you thought this video was helpful. Help me uh, reach more people and keep skateboarding growing to the masses, but uh, no right and wrong way. Love y'all. Mash.